Good morning, Lesson of the World. It's Tuesday, uh, October 27th. This morning in class, uh, you turned in your papers and we discussed together Rafe Blofarb and Liz Clark's uh, In Human Traffic, The International Struggle Against the Transatlantic Slave Trade. And I was glad to see that many of you apparently uh, enjoyed the book and, and found uh, it to be uh, an engaging way of, of learning something uh, about the past. Because our, our uh, conversation this morning existed only in sort of the, the, the moment in time, I really wanted to make one of these videos to try to recapture some, at least, of the, the central ideas that emerged uh, from this conversation. Uh, because, of course, you do need to be able to, you will be asked uh, about this on the test, and, and it is important that you uh, sort of be able to, to refer back uh, to, to this conversation and to the book itself. Uh, <clears throat> when that time comes. So um, I think we, we tried to, to discuss it in a couple different ways. We, we did try to unpack a little bit of the story itself, uh, the, the impetus for uh, British abolitionism and how after the Congress of Vienna and the end of the Napoleonic Age, uh, this creates uh, sort of diplomatic uh, tensions uh, between states like Britain and France because uh, France does not want to give Britain the right to enforce its abolitionist uh, positions on its own ships. Um, so, uh, and so the, the controversy around the Nerse is very much a, a controversy about sort of diplomatic uh, relations. Uh, and you do want to be able to, to tell me something about the events themselves, but you don't need to worry too much about being able to recall you know, the specific name of the, the captain of the ship that captured the Nearse, you know, those kinds of very small details are not going to be uh, sort of central. Of greater value or greater significance will be the questions that we turn to afterwards. The question is, well, what does this tell us about the values of, of European life uh, and in the world at large in the 19th century? What does it tell us? about changes that are coming about in this society? How is it related to uh, the Atlantic revolutions, the Industrial Revolution? We saw a number of different connections, referenced a number of different things, uh, that ranged from sort of the ideologies of liberalism with its ideas of freedom and equality, and how that plays out in the story, uh, to uh, the, uh, the rivalry of France and Britain, the diplomatic maneuverings and questions of sovereignty uh, that sort of existed in that context, and all those things are very important. Um, we saw how uh, Christian uh, uh, theology, a particular sort of evangelical fervor uh, for saving the world, uh, inspired uh, British abolitionism uh, in some ways. A lot of what, uh, a lot of all of that, in fact, could be wrapped up in a, a term that I don't think we used in class today, but we'll be using a lot more in the days ahead, which is the notion of a civilizing mission, that Britain is demonstrating this impetus to, Britain especially, but others as well, are demonstrating this impetus towards, or this belief in their responsibility to improve or, or change the world uh, for the better. Uh, we also uh, saw that in some ways there's a tension between that civilizing mission and the economic demands uh, of the time period, in part because of industrialization. So the slave trade is actually booming uh, in the 18th and into the 19th century precisely because consumption demand is, is being increased by industrialization and therefore slave demand in Cuba and in uh, Brazil is on the rise and, and uh, driving, uh, providing these incentives for the ongoing slave trade. So also how abolition itself creates an unintended sort of surplus of slaves in Africa, uh, which will be used in, uh, in particular in the, uh, the production and export of palm oil, which is a, a product very much in demand in Britain itself. Um, in, uh, for manufacturing uh, and running equipment, but also for uh, making soap. And those are themes that we'll be uh, developing uh, in the days ahead. More than anything, I think what the story shows us is how one particular incident can be unpacked to reveal a, a great deal 
uh, about uh, the world of, of, a, uh, of, of any particular moment, but how that Nearsay incident helps us understand the wider set of shifts that are happening at this opening uh, of the 19th century. That will be our theme uh, for the next three uh, days or so uh, in class, and I look forward to talking more with that, you about that starting on Thursday. Thanks, everybody. See you Thursday morning.